So if you're struggling trying to float on your back, hey, just cut it out and learn to float on your stomach first. Hi, I want to read you a small quote from Dr. Ray C. Wetmore, the author of Drown Proofing. The average human with lungs filled with air floats with about 99% of the body beneath the surface. That's an important thing to remember. As you start feeling something, your arms and your legs slowly sinking under the water, that's not you sinking. It's just your body finding its natural balance point in the water. Don't let it bother you. Don't let it make you nervous. It's the way it's supposed to work. So learning to swim includes controlling your breathing. While many sports want you to breathe in a certain rhythm, they rarely have sports out there that demand it, that could actually cause you to cough and choke if you breathe in the wrong time. But obviously with the face in the water is a bad time to breathe. And it's not natural for us to be forced into a given rhythm. So before you start swimming, practice your breathing in controlled timing by doing 10 swift bobs. Submerge completely under the water, come up, take a breath, and go right back down. If you can do 15 bobs without stopping, without having to slow down, to, then you're ready to, for that skill to, when you're swimming. So you can't float on your back? Well, guess what? We're not meant to float on our back. It's really not natural. If you're floating on your back, and by definition, floating talks about no muscle, what's going to happen is your feet are going to sink and your head's going to rise. And if you're a really buoyant person with a high BMI, you're going to stay vertical. Most of us average BMI folks are going to then roll over and float face down. That's how people float.